my plug in. Uh, and before we begin, I know we might, uh, this might be our first time meeting each other and somewhat it's like virtually, right? So before we begin, I would love to get to know our audience and each of you. So let's try to do a little fun activity, right? What I'm going to do right now is I'll ask a few short questions and all I need you to do is to type out your answer in our chat box as quickly and also as accurately as possible. So I hope you guys are ready. Hands ready on a keyboard. Um, a hint, um, the questions will I'll be asking will be about our favorite things. So first question. Okay, where is your favorite place to relax? Let me put the question here as well. Where's our favorite place to relax? It could be as specific as possible, like a specific corner in your house, um, or even as general as possible, maybe a country that you want to visit. Um, a place that you, you dream to go, a beach. Oh, a lot of beach lovers, my bed. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people are saying bed and beach. Dream to go to Korea. Interesting. Nothing is stopping you. <laughs> and it's your end now, holiday season. Okay, great. We have a very popular answer, which is either a beach or a bed. I've heard that Philippines is also very known for islands. Um, I've not personally been to Philippines before, but it's already in my bucket list. So hopefully very, very soon. All right, let's get to our second question. What is your favorite thing to do if you're working after work and if you're studying after studies? So yeah, what's your favorite thing to do? It could be maybe a routine um, or a hobby or a workout or an exercise that you do, or even eat, yeah, Royce. <laughs> play online games, gym, play online games, games, yes. A variety, oh, TikTok. We have a TikTok celebrity here, binge watch. What's your favorite um, movie or series that everyone's watching right now? Anime, whoa. The, my favorite anime is um, anything that has to do with the Joe Hishashi's soundtracks. Love it. Uh, like Spirited Away and all sorts. Love their soundtrack. Black Mirror. Talk to my friends. <laughs> okay, yeah. All right, that's very interesting. Everyone has very different kind of activities. Let's get to the next question. So I know we have a variety of backgrounds uh, from today. So if you are a designer, a developer, a product manager, or even anyone, even like a student or anyone that is um, using Figma right now, right? What is your current favorite Figma plugin if you're using Figma? Content real, okay. Lottie. <laughs> oh, maybe someone has um, a bit of understanding about Lottie, you might have used Lottie before. Fun, awesome. Is this interesting? What else? What else? Iconify, measure, use, contrast, Figma tokens. Wow. Exciting. It's quite a lot of things. There is design productivity. There is um, design resources to look for icons, content real, the Lottie, morph. Okay. Thanks for all of your very quick feedback. Everyone can really type very fast. <laughs> So that's exciting. Make sure that you type very fast later for questions, Q and A or so. <laughs> okay, that's awesome. Thank you everyone for those very interesting answers. So just a little bit of understanding, right? Have you guys heard of Lottie and have used Lottie before? Do you know what is a Lottie? Have you heard of Lottie files? I have used it before, but not for work. Yes, I heard, but not used. Okay. How about the rest? Have you heard of Lottie files or have you used a Lottie before? Lottie animation. Okay. Yes, but a little. Heard too, but not used. Okay. No Lottie, but haven't used it. I saw it on TikTok, on a TikTok video. Wow, we really have like TikTok people here. <laughs> Very trendy peeps. Okay, thank you so much. So that's kind of a, a few questions 
to ice break and hopefully we get to know a little bit about each other. We have beach lovers, a bit hugger, right? And um, very different personalities here as well. So today I'm going to talk a bit about Lottifal's Figma plugin. But before that, um, thanks Chi for introducing myself. Let me get a little bit in depth. Um, and as you guys know, I'm the product designer in mobile team at Lottifal's. So how to build anything uh, that is related to our mobile app, our desktop app, and also our tablet app. So apart from the product design things, I have a very deep interest in interactive design. So what I'm trying to explore right now is um, sound composing or song composing. Um, so there is quite a few softwares and tools that I'm trying to use that just experiment with creating music. And then outside of work, yes, I'm at this phase where I'm trying to explore new spots even trying out Muay Thai, boxing, and also tennis, etc. So that's a little bit on the personal side of uh, me. Um, hopefully there is also sports lovers, music lovers, product designer lovers, or um, anything that is related to this field. So let's get started. So today I would like to share to you guys a few things that hopefully will be able to help you with your designs in Figma which is animations. So I know uh, sometimes you might be used to using um, images that could be static. And um, part of us are also very interested to find out how can we actually add animations into our designs. Um, and today, that's exactly the topic that we are going to cover. How can we add animations into Figma? And what are we using? What does the plugin have? And what kind of features can you explore? So here are a few highlights that we're going to talk about. The first thing, since um, Lottie Files has a plugin in that sense, I'm going to talk a little bit about what Lottie Files is, what is a Lottie file, and then we are going to explore later with a few examples that I'm going to bring you through. We're going to explore one of the largest library that we have that are also free to use animations. So um, of course, giving credit is always appreciative, right, to those creators and contributors. And we're also going to look into how can you convert your animations using the Lottie Files plugin? How can you add animations into your designs? If you have a specific branding that you want to suit to, how can you change the colors of your animations in your designs using the plugin? And then um, ultimately connect all of them into a simple little prototype so that you are able to show it to your stakeholders or even for yourself to visualize how certain things look like when you are having an animation in your design. So towards the end, we are going to have a Q&A session, but feel free to drop in any questions that you have in the meantime at any point during my sharing, and then I'll help to address it whenever I have time or towards the end of the session. So without further ado, let's get started. So we are talking about motion today, and I just want to have a bit of um, touch on to what benefit it can bring you. We have three main points here that is kind of like a significant, significant discover when you have an animation in your product. Say the first point, increase engagement. And as we know, generally our eyes will always fall onto anything that has some sort of movements, even on a road when you're walking, suddenly there is a car that um, drives past you. In a very peaceful area, when, drive, when a car drives past you, it kind of just catches your attention as well. So the same kind of concept, you can apply that into design. When you're comparing a static image versus an animation, the ones with emotion will always catch our attention first. That's just how we are built naturally as human beings, right? And then that brings us to the second point, enable interactivity and also personalization. So in this case, you can see a lot of animations that are always so cute, so interesting, um, and you... Some of them is just so cute that you want to pinch them and that kind of that kind of feeling. So in this case, animations can be used to set down a tone or a mood and even sometimes to prompt a action, right? Let's say if it's within a product, a website or an app and give out some sort of storytelling or character that is associated to what you're trying to build um, for your product. And then ultimately, all of this will help you to increase or improve your conversion rate. So for example, we might be very familiar with um, when you're trying to sign up in an app or a website, those onboarding user journeys might have animations or something that they want to catch your attention to. So animation in this sense will help to direct the attention to the most important content. And then it can also be a very huge help when nowadays, you know, 
all of our attention spans are very, very short. So this helps to really bring up those important information to be conveyed to your users to make sure that they're using the product successfully or um, in a way that you want them to use it. So that's a little bit about motion and how we can help in designs or in any product that we're building. Let's jump into the next bit, which is Lottie files, what we have in Lottie files. So in Lottie files, we have a whole huge library of animations, which are uh, based on a file format called Lottie. So what Lottie basically is, is that it's a JSON based animation file format. And then what it has, um, you know, sometimes when we are trying to export an animation, we might come across um, export file formats such as PNG sequence, a GIF, or even an MP4, right? And what Lottie does, it's basically that it helps you to export your animation into a file format. But the difference is that it allows for a very high quality animation on multiple platforms that are supported. So with that being said, it helps to shrink the size from, let's say, um, 100 MB to a few 100 KB instead. So in this sense, what you could benefit when you're using these animations in this file format is that when you're trying to load that animation, the performance wouldn't be affected. And a user, from a user's point of view, it wouldn't take them too long to load a certain screen or a certain page. So performance-wise, would be able to help you on that because it ensures a very small size and high quality. Also, it's a multi-platform um, file format. It means that you can use a lot on iOS, on Android, and web without Mod, uh, much modifications. So this is all about Lottie. And you might be thinking right now, okay, so I have a very brief idea of how motion can benefit and then what's a Lottie. So let's look into how these kind of Lottie animations um, can be used, what kind of platforms you can use them, right? So as we know, there is so, so, so many kinds of possibilities when it comes to creativity. But I just want to show you a few examples that hopefully it is able to trigger a few more ideas that you might have for that item or that product that you're trying to build. So for example here, um, again, from a point that we have brought up earlier on, you can use animations in a walkthrough user journey, such as an onboarding. I think this one, all of us might be very familiar with animations on onboarding. You can also see them in in-app animations or even in websites and blogs, so a web-based um, platform. Um, and also recently, you know, it's very unavoidable that we are using chat apps. So in that case, stickers even can be animated to make your conversations so much more lively and interesting. Um, I can't really imagine how, how long ago was that that we used to have um, animations that are not even animations, maybe stickers that are still, that are static, but just really grateful that nowadays, you know, things are just so much more lively and vibrant. And then in social media platforms, you will also see very common use cases where you have these reaction buttons like a love, show appreciation, show love, or show your like, uh, show angry reaction or sad reactions. So these are also animations that you can use within your product, like micro animations even. And you can use them even in other places like gaming, infographic, and technological devices that you're trying to explore. So say if you're a product, manager or someone that is from the marketing um, industry or social media, you might be able to find yourself uh, very um, animations useful in your presentation slides, um, animating your icons, even for product designers and developers um, to add animations into social media and also your ads content. So these are a very few examples of use cases. Um, so hopefully that kind of triggers, tingles your creativity brain juice. And without further ado, let's get started and jump into Lottie Files plugin in Figma. And in that, um, in that screen, I'm going to show you a little bit of um, use cases. So just checking my screen if everyone can see my Figma, great. Okay, so let's get into how can you get access to Lottie Files plugin, right? The first thing you want to do is uh, to go to the community tab and then just look for Lottie Files. You should be able to see one that has um, Lottie Files icon. Um, and this is that plugin that you're able to download. 
don't worry if you're not able to find the link. I will be sharing all of the links that might be helpful for all of you towards the end of the session. So once you have downloaded that, you should be able to find that inside your plugin file. So let's say if I try to go to my plugins, it should be inside Lottie files. So let me just quickly open that up. Okay, so here is your plugin. Um, and I just want to spend a bit of time to explain what we have inside this plugin. So as you can see right here, it's our Lottie files plugin and you would uh, be advised to kind of log in using your account. So it's easier for you to navigate through um, anything that you want. And as you can see, on top here, there's three tabs. The first tab is our free to use animations that are being uploaded by our very, very talented animators, contributors that are from any part of the world. So when you're using these animations, you're able to see the creators on the top. So you have the second tab here, which is workspaces. So what you can do here is you are able to make amendments to animations that you find from the public, let's say, um, changing a certain characteristic, which I will cover on later, um, and then upload them into, let's say, in my own private space. So if you are loading inside here, inside projects, you're able to see my private animations. So what this means is any anim animations that I've put into my workspace will only be accessible and seen by myself and it's not to the public. Of course, you're able to have that option to publish it to the public. So the rest of the people are able to use that as well. And you also are able to collaborate with your other maybe working partners or colleagues in a collaborative workspace. So that's for workspace. And you have the third tab, which is import. So here, what it means is you might already have a ready-made .lottie or a .lottie file animation file. And you can just drag and drop them here. And what it does is you're able to load the animation and it will let you preview the animation, that visual. And then you can I choose to kind of do any further things using the tools and features that we have. So that's a very, very basic idea of what um, the Lottie Files plugin is. And we've covered these three parts. How can you download the plugin, explore the plugin? And right now, let's try to check out the animation library. So as you know, we have hundreds, thousands and thousands of animations inside here. And let's say if you're trying to use a very, um, the most commonly searched animation, probably it could be um, you're trying to look for an animation for successful state. Say if a request has been successful, a message has been successfully sent out um, you can find all of the animations here, depending on the style size, um, color that you're looking for. So you can just always, you know, go next page, back page, if, if you find anything that uh, fits your theme. If we're trying to look for the opposite, failed states is also very common, right? Failed to send your request. Oops, sorry, something has gone wrong. Uh, maybe internet connection is not working well. Even biometrics failed. Um, all sorts of field scenarios can be found inside that keyword that you're looking for. So if you're looking at, okay, I know we have like TikTok um, users, social media, right? So if you're looking for a like animation, you're also able to find them inside here, whether it's a love or a like animation. Yes, like 404 errors. Um, yeah, there's different, different, very different kind of styles, the lively kind or just like, you know, flipping um, the size coming from behind to in front, even like the very gaming kind of style size you also have with outlines, you also have that. So that's a very general idea of what you can look for. If you are coming from a advertising product marketing perspective, you might want to look for a design that is for an upcoming occasion or a festive. So say Christmas, do we have anything like that? Oh, we have so many kinds. So we have Christmas trees, we have Santa, um, and all sorts of decorations that you can use. So not only for product designers that are building a web-based, app-based um, product, but you can also always use this into any canvas um, that you would like to export it to, even into like a square to, to share it over later on. So yes, we have gone through a few examples of how you can use um, the library with any sort of keywords that might suit 
you're looking on or your needs. And then right now you might be wondering, okay, there is so many kind of um, cases, right? Can I actually change the color of the assets and background? Because I know um, sometimes your product might have a specific team color or a festival, Christmas, you might want it to be a specific green. You, you might want this Christmas tree to be in, in green instead of red. And can I actually convert them into an SVG if somehow I do not want it to be an animation at the moment? So here I have set up a use case that we can cover. Let's say right here, I have an onboarding or welcome screen that is a football uh, related app. And then you're trying to register or sign up, right? So you are landed into this onboarding screen. So maybe I have this placeholder here and I know that I want to look for something that is football related. So I'll just look for football. And also happy World Cup celebration, everyone, um, if there is any football fans. <laughs> so say if I'm looking for football, there's different kinds. You have the footballs, you have the football player. And say if I really like this animation, I can choose to convert it to a GIF, but I can also choose to convert it into a SVG file. So what this means is that, let's say, if I click into insert as SVG, straight away, this is a working file that you're able to change the color. Let me give you an example if I change it to blue. So yeah, basically, you are able to change it to whatever color that you want it to be. And that's your SVG. Uh, for example, right, this ball is bouncing in. I want it to have this frame specifically. You can always use the scrub here to see which frame you want it to be. Okay, maybe this one is more interesting. I want this specific frame to be exported as SVG. And I'll just click on that button and there you go. This is your SVG based on the frame that you want. Okay, so that's for SVG scenario. But let's say if I actually want to create a mock-up so that I can share it to my stakeholders, I can also do that by converting it to a GIF. Um, you can also change your color background to whichever color that you want. So most of the time, the Lottie animations that is uploaded, right, could be either in white background or a transparent background. Um, and you might want to change those colors to fit it to um, a color that you're looking for. So say my app is in this um, bright yellow, orangey tone, and I can always just copy that uh, color code. And then bam, you have those color background updated. So let's say if I want to put it into a prototype, all I need to do is just to convert it to GIF. And what it does right now, it's exporting them in your frames so that it's able to put it into a GIF format. So while it's loading, um, you might be wondering why actually we are converting to GIF since Lottie Files has Lotties, right? And the reason for this is because um, in Figma Canvas, uh, Lottie currently is not supported, hence GIF um, in the other side, we, uh, we, it's given to us as an option. So at least we're able to use this to preview that animation. But then when you're trying to build it into your app, you do not have to use those GIFs anymore. You have to use a Lottie animation, which will help you to compress those sites even better. And how can you hand over those to your developers? I will cover a little bit more towards um, the next part of our session. So once it's being converted, this is actually your GIF. You maybe might not be able to see, hey, where's the football? So what you can do is in your GIF file here, you can actually use that scrubber and put a scene that you want it to be showing. And there you go. So let me just remove this circle and put it in the middle. Let's have a look. So there you go. You have your animation inside your screen and then you can link it to however you want it to be. You can also actually export them in transparent backgrounds. So this is your transparency grid and then you can always just export them. Um, I've exported a version where you can have a look here. So this is the one that is already in transparent background um, and you can view them as well. The only difference that you will see is maybe um, the GIF format might seem to be a bit jittery that's because it's a GIF format with a transparent background. And since GIF is only supporting a one-bit transparency, um, sometimes you might see those kind of uh, the rough effects on the site. 
but it's okay since this is just for a showcase purposes and you will be using a Loti animation that would not have this problem. So if you really, really do not want that jitter to appear, you can just export it with a solid color background, which is like this case that we have. And then you can see that it's slightly different. So it's just the transparency issue. Yeah. Okay, so we have covered the very first example and we have seen how we can choose our color palettes in the color, um, our background colors specifically, right? And then let's try to see if we want to choose different colors for our animations. Say if I choose something that has more color um, within a design. Okay, let's choose this one. Let's say if my, my app here is very orangey and it's green and red, I might want to change it. So you have this button, this section here that is customize these animations, colors and more. And what you will see is there is a few options for you to play around. The first that you have is the color presets. Okay, let me just clean up things. Is the color presets here where if you might not necessarily be very picky about the colors, you can straight away just use the color presets that are really made by Lottie Files. So all of them will be matched based on whichever color combination you have chosen. Maybe this might be very similar to me. But what if I want to change something else, right? So say if I can even choose a new color palette. So for all designers or people who are very particular about your color accuracy, you can use this part to create your very own color palette and then just change um, based on whatever kind of needs you want it to be. So say if I want to add this, they will help you to combine those colors inside here. So that's for your new color palette. And I want to show something super, super interesting that is pretty mind-blowing to me. You have the generate palette option for you if you really, really like this color. Say if you do not have a team color at the moment and you're open to exploring color palettes. Let's say if I have this image here, I will just click onto it, generate palette, bam! You have those color options, uh, color picked out for you. If I give you another example of this really cute cat image, I really like that team color. And there you go, they have already chose the color for you. You have brown, you have maroon color and all. Let me give you another example. We have red and that cat's color is even handpicked here. Okay, let's do another one, it's super fun to do. It's sometimes quite uh, addictive. So if I generate color palette, and there you go, you are able to see any colors that you see here matched into your animation. That cat is cute, yeah. <laughs> okay, so that's for um, your color palette and how can you customize that based on um, which other color combinations that you want. Let's dive into example two. All right, how can I use animations in situations when the product, for example, a mobile app requires loading? So I know that loading could be almost in any other platforms that you might encounter trying to make a payment that requires loading for the payment gateway to process and all, trying to send a message that's where you have loading, trying to um, even push in an action button to purchase something is also something that requires loading time. So I have an example here. Okay, hopefully this doesn't make you guys hungry, but here is a food app. Um, that I have just quickly put up some designs, very simple one. So let's say this app is here to show you all kinds of food that we have in the whole wide world and everyone can just snap pictures and then share it here. So this part here is more like a feed that, you know, a very common behavior you can vertically scroll. So what we want to do is how can we actually show that the rest of the content below these two is actually loading when the user is scrolling upwards instead of you know, straight away showing the images like this. Because most of the time, on the tech side of things, uh, it might require a few seconds to load more of the contents. So what I'm going to show you is this example right now. So when I'm trying to scroll down, it shows me a few seconds of loading time once it's done, and then it shows me the rest of the loaded content. So that's what we're trying to cover right now. And let's get to our templates. So this is my screen one, which is my landing screen where I will see these two images when I land into this app. 
And then I have screen two, which flashes out the rest of the images um, that we have. So what I'm gonna look for right now is to go to my Lottie Files plugin, look for a loading animation. And as you, as you can see here, there's very different kind of styles. You have, you have those like the circle looping kinds, you have a dot loading kinds, you have even like more stylish ones and even like a message sending kind of loading animation. Um, and even more, this is more like a music kind even, um, and like a pulsing animation as well. But let's say if I really like this animation here, and then that animation might not suit to my app color. I can always change that in the color presets. Very quick one, I'll just probably, if I'm feeling lazy, I'll just want to test out certain things. I can just show you which is the color presets. Or, oh yeah, another tip is you can actually generate a palette based on components. So say if I want it to be in this orange, I click on that component and select generate template. So what it does is it picked this component's color and it placed it in for you. And you can always just you know, um, add more colors from there so that it combines um, those options for you within your design, right? But I really like this one. So I'm just gonna export this. So whenever you, ch you have changed a color, usually you would need to save an animation because that's not the original animation that has been created and that you have discovered in the public animation, right? So what I did just now is that I save it to my private workspace, which you can see here, workspaces. And that now you can see I have my own version of that loading animation with my own color. Okay, wait, sorry, there is a comment that says we are not seeing your Figma working file. Which working file are we talking about? Do you see my prototype? You can see it on my end. Okay. Let me know if more of you guys are not able to see it. Okay, maybe Jayu, you can try to... Okay, you see the prototype, great. Hopefully everything's working well, or else just let me know again. Not the plugin. Are you able to see the plugin? Okay, you can see the plugin. Okay, great. Maybe Jayu, you can try to restart and then rejoin again. Hopefully that helps to solve your problem. Okay, let's try to proceed. So if I am done with this, that background color doesn't matter to me since my app is already in white background and the animation itself is already in white. I am cool with that. I'll just convert it into a GIF. Sometimes, oh, sometimes you have to close it and open it so that it refreshes um, that update that you have made. So I'll just get back to my workspaces, open up my private animation again. And then I should be able to see that animation. So what I'm gonna do right now is to convert to GIF, give it a few seconds, drink a cup of water, take a deep breath, <laughs> take a break. And then you're able to add that into your Figma. Okay, so it's here right now. So let me just quickly um, eyeball it. I know this is not how you should do it in, in a general design environment. But please bear with me, this is just a showcase. <laughs> okay, so I'm just gonna place it down here at the bottom of my screen. And then what I'm gonna do right now is under your prototype mode, I'm gonna link this screen to my second screen. And with that, I'm gonna give a after delay property. Say so I'm just gonna give it maybe um, 4,000 milliseconds, so we are able to see that better. Um, instant is fine. Okay, let's try it. So I'm gonna refresh, and what you can see right now is that animation down here, and then bam, you, you see the, the rest of your contents. So there you go, that's your first use case of loading situations. And then you might be thinking, okay, what if I don't like this kind of style? Um, I just wanna load that container. No worries. We have so many kinds of animations. Hopefully all of them suits um, different kind of scenarios. So say I have uh, a second prototype here. So right now I have a very random quirky animal app and hope you appreciate the cute animals. Happy Friday everyone once again. So we have a scaredy cat. We have a don't hurt me lamb image. And what we want to do right now is to refresh it 
and then to show this loading container. So what it does is actually showing that gradient that is, um, you know, uh, showing that something is loading at the background. So on a user's experience, at least the users know that something is loading and they are not left to be very lost. Like, is this app actually responding to my scroll or it's stuck? Do I have to crash this app? So that's why we need to have this kind of animations. And then this is where you can see the rest of your images and a shocking moment. <laughs> so yes, we are going to cover this right now in our second use case. So what we're going to do is to look for a, uh, what kind of keyword would be suiting for that? Loading skeleton? Okay, hopefully we have, okay, we have loading wireframes, even a skeleton is there because of that keyword that I've placed inside. Um, let me try to find a box that I really like and that might be a bit more obvious. Okay, so maybe this one might suit my container. And what I'm going to do is just to convert it to GIF, add to Figma. So sometimes some of them, you might notice that converting to GIF might take a longer time. Some of them is pretty quick, just one or two seconds. Some of them maybe 20 seconds or so. It really depends on how many frames that animation has. So just try to pick anyone that is like not as heavy um, to reduce that waiting time. And what I'm doing right now is just to fit my box and make it rounded radius. I'm also trying to make a skeleton for the avatar, the title name section. So I'm just going to copy paste that and then put it a 16 height and then make it look a bit more similar as that container. Going to duplicate it so we have at least two to view. And what I'm going to do right now in the prototype mode, once again, is to do something very similar. Give it a after delay. And then uh, once again, maybe I'll just put a 4,000 seconds and then it should be good to go. So there you go. You have the loading state and then it shows your animation. So that's your loading scenario number two example. Okay. Hopefully that chunk of um, use case has been insightful. Let's get into the third part, which is the last example that I have for today. All right, so now we know what we can do. We can change colors. We have covered how you can change colors in color palette, generate your own new color palette using your own color code, even generating it using images or a design component, um, changing backgrounds, having it in solid backgrounds, transparent backgrounds, converting it to SVG or GIF, depending on your needs. You might be um, wondering, okay, what if I want to create my own animation, my own Lottie animation, um, and I might not be very skilled in animation. I just want to have a very quick animation that does its job. Just a simple one would do. And I already have my design file ready. So how can I do this, right? Maybe that animation, I couldn't find this specific style that I want, or maybe I'm trying to animate my logo to put it into my loading page or landing page or onboarding page whatsoever. So let's get into that in a bit. So what we have right now in Lottie Files, this will have to require you to get to our Lottie Files website um, because it's more of like a working environment. Um, what you need to do is to search for SVG to Lottie, and this should be that link, convert SVG to Lottie. Um, don't worry, I will be sharing this link as well later on. And what you can see here is in our Lottie Files website, we have this tool, SVG to Lottie, that helps you to convert your SVG file to a Lottie animation. So let's try it out. I have an example here, which is paw print SVG, right? Um, going back to our example of the animal app again, um, I really like to build more upon that app and I want to animate a loading screen within that onboarding experience. So I'm just going to upload this into the SVG to Lottie website. And there you go. This is your few list of preset animations. So you don't have to animate it yourself. We have got you covered. So um, you can see here, there's different kinds of options. You have the rotating ones. 
um, you have those that is coming from top to bottom, fading in and out. It really depends on what kind of style you're trying to do. You're trying to um, show it to your users. Um, I know that, you know, animation, there is different kind of personalities that you want to, uh, you might have, or you might be tying it to your brand. So say if it's a very stable, elegant kind of branding, maybe a fit in, fit out would suit that better. But if it's a quite a playful animation, maybe something that rotates or something that has more of like a pattern kind of animation would suit that better. If I am going to create an animation that shows a loading idea, probably for me, I might want to look for something that is rotating. And then I'll just put it in a loop. Um, you even have rotating vertically or horizontally. So back to my use case, I want to use it for a loading scenario. So what I have here, I've chosen my animation and I can either download it as a Lottie. So you can see it's a .json already. And if you open that up, it's a very text-based file format. Um, so in this case, as a product designer or product manager or whoever, you can straight away download this Lottie and then hand it over to your developers to build. So this would be the Lottie file. And then, or else, if you want to bring it to your plugin, you can upload to your preview. What it does right now is it's uploading into my account. So um, earlier on, I've mentioned it's best to log in and have an account so it's easier for you to locate your animations to store it. Okay, so right now, what I'm doing is I have saved my paw animation into my private folder. And what I'm going to do right now is to bring you guys back to our plugins and then get to my workspace. So I should be able to see the paw uploaded to mine right now, 2nd of December. Yes, there we go. So right now I have a screen um, that I want to put that animation for. So a loading state and then a cute animal that keeps all worries away, just a, like a simple sentence. So I'm just going to convert that into a GIF. Maybe I want it to be a SVG. Maybe I might not want it to be. So I'm just going to convert that, but I have already exported that. So I'm just going to use it to save some time. Going to replace this and put it into the screen. And then there you go. You have just created your very own um, branding for your animation. So yeah quick and easy way to create an animation. So back to that example earlier on, right? How can you hand over an animation if you're in a Figma's environment or if you have seen an animation that you really like in this plugin itself? You can of course explore it in the Lottie Files website, but say if you really like this one here and you are just too lazy to get to that website to look for that link, you have this option here that says open animation. And what is it does is that it brings you to that creators page with that animation. And all you need to do is just to copy this OMBAT URL and then pass it to your developer or leave it a note in your Figma uh, for, of this link. So what they will see is, let's say if I try to paste it down here, there you go, you can, you can have the animation and then your developers will just have to download them based on any file formats that they need. So what you're looking for as a developer is to download them in either Lottie JSON or optimized Lottie JSON. And you might be wondering what's the difference between these two formats. So if your animation is built up in very simple layers, it's not too complex, there's not a lot of colors, um, then it's better for you to share we go with optimized Lottie JSON, which helps you to compress it into a smaller file. But then in some cases, if you find that oh, um, the, the, the animation that you have created might look slightly different in optimized Lottie JSON. That's probably because that system is trying to simplify your animation and trying while it's trying to compress it to make it a bit smaller, maybe they have removed a few layers that might not be necessary for your animation. So in some cases, you might see the colors might not be exactly the same. So in that case, maybe you want to explore Lottie JSON instead. But either way, both is still going to make your file size much more smaller than a GIF. As you can see here, a GIF is 121. And then even like a normal Lottie JSON is just 32 KB. So there you go. 
So back to our example, I think I've covered most of the things, hopefully as we are approaching towards the end. So yes, thank you so much for your time and for your attention. I hope it was as fun as it is to, for me to share. Um, if you have any questions, now is the time um, and let's talk about it. So just feel free to drop it into our chat box and I'll help to address it with my best ability. I'll join you as well, uh, Kareen. So we questions. Thank you, by the way, for sharing those um, those tips and tricks for using Lottie. And thank it does you, thank you. Like a lot of time for everyone. Yes. So uh, some of the questions. Um, first, I'll first uh, I'll first uh, ask this question because this appeared twice. Some are asking, how do you create your own animations in Lottie? Uh, can you use After Effects? If yes, what file type? Should... Yeah, like float like the pre-made animations that are already available. What's uh, what should be okay. the case for that? Yeah. All right, sure. So let's say if you're trying to create an animation from scratch, you might be importing those uh from an Adobe Illustrator to After Effects. So make sure that it do not have very complex properties. Um, like a drop shadow or a gradient. Um, the idea here is to make it as simple as possible so that the lot is, uh, is, is just easier for it to process later on and clean all of your layers in Illustrator first before you bring it to After Effects because or else it will be a whole hassle for you to clean them up. And what you're going to do in After Effects is you're going to download the Lottie Files plugin or sometimes uh, you might hear body moving. So this is where you're able to, uh, once you're done with all of the animations, your layers are pretty clean, you can export them via that plugin. Um, and then it should be pretty much good to go. If you want to check out your animation, whether it's working fine, you can always go to our Lottie files uh, to try the preview uh, feature. So you're able to check if uh, there's any errors with that. Okay. Preview nice. and test. Okay, let me just um, quickly just sh share everyone that link. Okay. So this is where you can test out that. And thanks for that question. It reminded me to share you guys more links that I've mentioned earlier on. So keep the questions coming and as I um, pass you those links. All right. Um, while you're preparing those links, um, the next question you can address is ability to use gradient. Uh, in animation, just solid color. Um, I think it's always best to have it in solid colors um, just to avoid any complexity for it. Um, there is also a link that covers uh, what kind of features um, is encouraged to be used in an animation. Um, I'll try to see if I can find that link. Um, yes, but in the meantime, it's advisable to use a solid color if possible. Okay. Yeah. And I think someone else uh, in the chat, I think it was John, BG or GIF also hates gradient. <laughs> I mean, you can see yeah. some GIFs with some gradients, but then it does look like kind of pixelated. Unless that's the style that you're looking for, then maybe it's like best to just reserve it for, for solid colors. I guess that's why also... For Lottie files, mostly it is like vector, like the, the styles usually are vectorized. No, like, like that's yeah. the... Okay, okay, okay. Another question here is, when would be the instance, the insert as SVG would be useful? Like while you were going earlier in the Lottie files plugin, there was either um, in, uh, or... Um, export as GIF. So, which, uh, in what case would the insert SVG be, um, you think would be used? Okay, yeah, sure. Um, so for my use case, sometimes as a designer, I would want to use a SVG when I am showing just the design on its own and I do not want it to interrupt the loading time and performance of that Figma file because sometimes having too many GIF files might take up a lot of loading time and memory. Um, and then I would also use a SVG when I just want it to be an illustration or I want to change that illustration 
and then share them that link of that Lottie animation separately so it doesn't clog up um, my working space. So in that sense, I would create a, an artboard with just the SVG and then maybe I have already changed the colors um, in that SVG. And then on the other hand, I would change those colors in the Lottie animation and pass that Lottie animation link to my developer. Yep. Okay, okay. So, so essentially, it's still going to be some, like if you're going to be sharing it as a file, you still should get the Lottie link specifically because that would be the way to like uh, turn it over to the other person. Okay. Yes. Okay, correct. we have a question. Um, will it issues if we use the existing animations that we have uh, to a web or mobile project? Um, good question. Currently, it is free to use. Um, it's a open source animation. But of course, it's always very great to give credits to the creators who have put in so much time and effort into building that, right? So if you are actually um, tweaking certain things, let's say the colors of an animation um, within your product, maybe at the footer or in your credits section, always give them a credit if it's, if it's possible. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And I guess um, to ask, like in the uh, to sorry the the Lottie uh, plugin itself, is there a way to get the Lottie file link, like from the plugin itself? I'm not sure if that was that was shown in the plugin itself, because I I do oh, yeah. I did notice that it was in the workspaces, but then is there like a way to get the link of the Lottie file, like from within Figma? From within Figma. Um, like in the plugin, yeah. Yeah, currently uh, it's not because all of the okay. things are tied to the web database. Hence, okay. it has to bring you to the website itself. Yeah. Okay, so it's either you pull it from um, from via files plugin into your, your Figma file, um, edit it there, and then once you're ready to like turn it over, you go back to Lottie, like you have to go to the browser. Like it's not going to be like within just within the plugin, for example. Mm, yes, correct. Um, okay, okay. The reason being, sometimes some of the animations might not directly be coming mm. from the public animation. Maybe you have already saved it in your private workspace that is not yeah. accessible to your developers. That's why you have to get it from your profile and then place it inside. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you. There is another question. Are there premium Lottie animations? I guess, I guess to expound on this question uh, from from John, I also sorry now I'm only now like calling out the names of those people who are an, uh, asking questions. Thank you so far to all of those that have answer, uh, asked questions so far. Um, I guess is there like a like are there Lottie animations that are limited use? Like, I guess like you have to pay for it or something versus the one yes, that are free. Yes, of course. Mm. We do have that. So uh, it's with. Icon Scout. So Icon Scout is also a part of Lottie Files family. And we have uh, assets that are exclusively designed by even more talented animators. So those are, you actually have to subscribe to them. Um, and you can access to, yeah, the links that is shared in the chat box. Thank you, everyone. Nice. So Icon Scout is also part of Lottie. Just to, just to share with everyone, that was something that was new to me while we were also talking about like this 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 topic like oh icon scout is also part of of lottie files <laughs> so i i used to use uh, icon scout as well for like a resource for for icons so it's it's oh nice. great great yes yeah so right now they have lottie files uh lottie animations within icon scout as well so feel free to explore it there too oh nice nice oh right uh does anyone have any other questions um Feel free to like send it in the Q and A. Uh, but so far, uh, thank you, Kareen, for for showcasing this. And I guess it's pretty straightforward as well. Um, how we can use a uh, Lottie files to um, spice up the the prototypes that we're making, so that you know we can prove or rather just showcase like the things that may be taken for granted by others, like the small uh, interaction that we have. Okay, here we have another question. Um, the question or will my animations get monetized since there are premium lotties? Okay, I guess this is more on the 
if you make your own your your own animation and then you publish it in Lottie. Okay, uh, maybe these uh, there is a few of my team members here. If you are able to help out in mm-hmm. these, that will be appreciated. But as far as I'm aware, if you are uploading it within a uh, a contributor in Icon Scout is the marketplace for you, so you are able to uh, monetize in in that space. But feel free to expand on my points. Um, like Joey, Joey is from Multifiles as well. Oh, there, yeah. So Joey did answer it. Uh, in in the answered questions, okay, Bebby is kind of weird with the with the interface. It it didn't inform me that there was a reply. But anyway, I will just read it out loud for the benefit of everyone. There is a hire me feature on lottiefiles.com. Um, potential clients can reach out to you directly. But the best way, as what Karine has said, is to join as a contributor on Icon Scout. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay, and then I guess another question is. Uh, are there any limitations to the number of animations I can save in my workspace? In your workspace, I think at the moment, um, if you're uploading around like 20, 30, that shouldn't be a problem. But there is also an option for you to subscribe to Lotifile subscription where you have access to your workspace where you can collaborate, create a workspace and then share your animations where everyone can comment uh, and collaborate, drop in comments, like get a notification when someone uploads an animation. And then that's where you have unlimited um, uploads for your animations. But in the meantime, if you do not upload until up to like 100 and plus and plus kind of animations, that, that shouldn't be a problem so far. But okay. it's advisable if you are a full-time animator that uh, needs to upload animations very frequently it's better to have a at least a ba- basic plan okay. yeah 50 answer that it's up to 50 so that is the limit i think that's a lot already you know like you know if you're yeah. if you're just like exploring just like putting some animations and generally you should be reusing some of them anyway and not making a new one every time <laughs> so so i think that should be fine like at least for for the starting out yeah okay um do we have any other questions or uh do you if ever if ever Karine, do you have any there or say uh, while while we let people um think of more questions if ever yeah. there are any sure so um if any of you guys because i saw in our short quick questions earlier on um some of you have heard of lucky files but might not be using it yet. So if you're ex- at the phase of exploring Lottie files or you are using Lottie files right now and you encounter any problems or questions that you need our help with um, in that link uh, earlier on that I've shared and maybe I'll just share it again, um, just feel free to join our Lottie files Discord and put in your questions there and we're, we, we will be able to help you out in their platform or just DM us in any of our social medias like LinkedIn, Twitter. Um, Discord, yeah. Okay. Okay, nice. Okay. Um. Okay. Because I mean, okay. So for for essentially using Lottie is very straightforward. It is a repository for like animations. You don't have to create. However, you can just try to search if someone else has made that, and you can also personalize it on your own. That technically wouldn't um. Uh, what do you call this? That wouldn't face any problems when we're using it, right? Like even if we change, like for example, the 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 soccer animation or the 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 uh, sorry soccer football <laughs> football animation or the or the the team players that are like standing. If you change the colors there, it there shouldn't be any problem if you use that for your own um your own apps or your own websites, right? Yes, correct. Just remember to give credit. If mm. possible, yeah, yeah, and it's ah. Could you, I guess, share uh, uh well, I guess the 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 link for the pricing is already here. So what? How how okay. much? If ever, like just to just to put it on record, I am going to open it as well. Oh, okay. but then it's yeah. essentially it okay. starts uh for free, right? Oh. yeah. Yes, correct. So you have the basic plan for free where you can upload fifty private files. And you have one private project, so you have access. You uh, you have access to 
um, Lottie editor, which is uh, how you can amend layers within that animation and a few tools. And if you upgrade to the second tier, it's individual plan. So this is $14.99 per month, which is billed annually uh, to your account. So in this case, you are able to have access to unlimited private files, projects, and then have uh, even more tools and features that you can use. So in this case, um, color palette earlier on, if we are uh, generating certain colors and you want to save it into your own workspace, um, that's the limit that you can go as far in a basic plan. So for you to amend colors, save it in an animation and then apply it in your designs, that would require you to have an upgrade. And then the other tier, the other option for you is a team plan um, where you can collaborate with your colleagues or your company. So that's built at $24.99 um, for per user per month. Um, that again would be built annually. So this will kind of unlock even more features, which is like team collaboration or your team's version history. So let's say with that football animation that I have earlier on, um, I have changed it to orange color and then maybe Joey today have changed it to purple color. So we are able to track those version histories uh, with these kind of features. And collaboration wise is where you're commenting, um, team access and permissions for them to get those links within your workspace comes into place when you're in a team plan. Yeah, so that's a very brief idea of this. Nice, okay. But feel free to check out those pricings in the link that Joey has shared over, but let me share it again, pricing plan. Okay. okay. Meet you. Okay. Well, uh, uh, there is no more questions that are coming in so far. Uh, but uh, for for the meantime, I guess I can. Um, if ever there are any more questions, um, people can just like go to their to your Discord or ask it in your social media if ever. Uh, but for now, yeah. I guess we can um end it here because <laughs> we have like learned the the value of Lottie and how it can it can spice up our designs and uh, with with motion yes so with animation uh, we normally take for granted in our um in our apps and in our websites uh, so thank you so much Karine for the the talk and for sharing uh, all about Lottie to us and also just showcasing the different things you can do um yeah uh, do you have Thank any you so much for having thing? me. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just want to say, yeah, thanks for having me. I have definitely had a, a lot of fun even prepping or sharing to everyone today. Hope uh, it has been insightful or you have learned a few tips and tricks about Lottie Files. If you are wanting to explore even more in Lottie Files, there is other platforms that we have as well in our website. You also have mo the mobile app for you to um, create your own Instagram stories. You have the plugins um, in Figma and even more plugins for any other design softwares um, that you can explore. So just feel free to get into our website, uh, lottifiles.com. Uh, just let me quickly share that link here. And yeah, let's, let's continue to stay connected. Um, the Lottie Files community will always be here to help and support. Yeah, and the link is here. Okay. So I guess um, with that, uh, wait, can you go to your, your starting slide? I'll just take a screenshot of both of us just just for a oh. uh, a photo, <laughs> just to commemorate sure. the ending of this. This Then essentially the, okay. the event is done. Uh, yeah. Thank you so much for everyone for um okay all right wait can you can you go to your in your slides in um uh, in Lottie, yeah in figma yeah or or the the one okay. in Lottie. by the way this one is recorded we did start the recording as soon as uh we started talking <laughs> uh we will be posting this in our youtube channel like as soon as as soon as if you want to go back and right. it, checking it. Okay. I guess uh, so that's it. Uh, thank you, everyone. Uh, 
and hope that you start lose using Lottie more now and maybe you can use it for your work or your personal projects at the very least. Um, maybe you can add it, uh, make make some Christmas cards since it is Christmas already. There are some Christmas animations there. <laughs> thank you, everyone. Yeah. All right. Thank you again, Karine. Right. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Have fun. Have fun designing. Bye.